done. Amen. For surely this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad. Amen. It's already a wonderful day. The reason why it's wonderful, he decided to put me in it. Everybody didn't have their testimony this morning, but he decided to put me in this day, so it's already wonderful. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God. Amen for all of you that makes up this great body of believers. Amen. I'm not going to be before you very long. Amen. Go ahead and do knowledge class this morning. Amen. I'm going to stay on the same uh, flow. Amen. As, uh, as, um, uh, as Pastor Murray. Amen. Um, you can be seated. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to be good this morning and remain in my 45 minutes. Amen. Amen. But I uh, just want to uh, bring some, some things, amen, to our attention. Uh, I'm still talking about building a brick house. Amen. Uh, but I want to more uh, talking about how to keep the brick house after. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. After the building, after the move in, after everything has been done, amen. How long do you keep your brick house? How do you maintain the brick house? Amen. 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 So we're going to uh, take a couple of scriptures, amen. And, uh, you know, we're going to move around a little bit. Uh, we're going to move around a little bit. Uh, we're going to go to the book of Nehemiah. Amen. I hope I'm not overstepping my boundaries. Amen. With the as I can pass it. Amen. I don't know if he, he was headed that way, but we're going to go that way this morning. Amen. 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 The book of Nehemiah uh, at the eighth chapter. Amen. We first like to give honor to God who is truly the head of our life. Amen. Amen. To the said man of this house, Apostle Amen. Lord. Oh, Amen. To the executive pastor, Pastor Murray Duffy. Amen. To all the elders, the mothers, amen. To the pastors, amen. amen. To you, you, and you, amen. To my wonderful wife and my wonderful children, yes, amen. Lord. Yes, Lord. amen. We will, we appreciate God, amen. We're going to go to the word of the Lord. Everybody is there at Nehemiah 8, 8 and 1. Uh, I'm actually going to be reading from the New International Version. Amen. So if you can follow along with me. Uh, all the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. Excuse me. Uh, we're going to uh, first give you the history so that uh, we'll be up to speed of where we at right now. So uh, we all know that Nehemiah assisted with building the wall around Jerusalem. Now it is uh, at the point now the people are returning because the wall has been completed. So now uh, Nehemiah being the governor, uh, he says now we have to get us back in the place of how to maintain it. How, what we need to do to ensure that this won't happen again. So now he comes to a point after all the people have adjourned, came back, uh, began to build their homes, began to build their lives uh, behind the city walls. Now he gathers them together. Now it says all the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra, the teacher of the law, to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women, all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak to noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. All the people listened attentively 
to the book of the law. So, now we're at this place that Nehemiah, the leader that he is, he encouraged people to have a mind to work, to continue to do the work. But he also has to now encourage them, don't let the work die. Don't let the work fail. So now he has to place back in their remembrance of who God is. So he calls on the priests, he calls on the scribes, calls on the priest Ezra to read from the book of law, to tell them what to do and not to do. For some reason we find ourselves uh, forgetting those teachings, forgetting what has been taught to us. When we get that blessing, when we finally get into the position that God has promised to us, we end up forgetting about God. So Nehemiah says, look here, we're going to have to get to a place that we don't forget about who God is. We all have to get to a place to remember what God has done for us. Amen. We never are at a place that we uh, 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 have reached our plateau that we don't recognize who God is. Amen. Amen. We all have to get to a place where we have to recognize who God is. Now, in moving into the territory, I've learned working in the insurance industry for many years that you can devalue your own property. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can devalue your own property. The reason why you can debate is because of the uh, some of the renovations that you do are the upkeeping, the maintenance, um, the, 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 the way that you maintain in the home. Uh, everything that's around you are you making sure everything is up to cold in your home. So Nehemiah is now in this place to make sure that everything is set for the upkeep, to keep the people comfortable in their place behind the wall. Now, I want to uh, go and uh, look at a story. Look at a story. Uh, go to 2 Kings. We're going to tie it all together. 2 Kings 20. 2 Kings 20. Now, I told you that, uh, of course, uh, you can devalue your own property. One of the uh, most common uh, reasons for a property going down in value is because of security. Uh -huh. If I'm not safe in the area that I'm in, why should I be there? All right. If I have no uh, ability to be comfortable in my own home and not worry about somebody coming in, why should I be there? So, one of the uh, the uh, examples that I want to show you will show you how we're devaluing our own home. Okay? Uh, Second Kings. Um, we'll start at the 12th chapter. At the time, Marduk, Marduk, Beldan, son of Beldan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters and gifts because he had heard of Hezekiah's illness. Hezekiah received the envoys and showed them all that was in his storehouse. I don't think people are following us. Let's read that again. At the time, Mardu, Baldan, son of Baldan, king of Babylon, the enemy, sent Hezekiah letters and gifts. Because he 
heard of Hezekiah's illness. Hezekiah read this, received the envoys and showed them all that was in his storehouse. One key point, you have to be careful who's celebrating you in your time of need. You have to be careful who's celebrating you in your time of need. Hezekiah now, after he goes through his illness, after he turns his face to the wall, after he pleads and, and looks to the Lord, and the Lord changes his mind concerning his situation. Now, here comes his enemy. His enemy now brings his gifts and come and praise him and come and do all these things, but Hezekiah did not think about the security of his brick house. <clears throat> because he wanted to be accepted and celebrated, not looking at the, the person who was celebrating him, he decides he wants to show everything. That's why I get so mad at people. I get so mad at people. When you decide you want to get on social media uh -oh. and tell everybody yes. all your business uh -huh. and they decide to want to comment on your business then you get mad. and you get mad. I, 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 for the life of me, I, I, I don't understand it. I, I really, I, I, I really don't understand I, 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 I really don't understand it. I really don't. I just, please help me to understand. Why do, why do we do that? What, what, why? Why? We have to learn that everybody is not for you. Uh, but we also have to learn to be, uh, be able to accept our own place. Deal with our own stuff. We don't need everybody in our own in our business. Like, our season is for us, not for everybody else. You got to speak up again. That's good. You got to speak up again. Because everybody don't understand the process that you're going through. So they're gonna talk out of turn based on their opinion. Because we want somebody to pit pat us while we're going through our, what we went through. We're seeking validation. I'm a king. Went through a situation, an illness. God had already delivered him. He made up his mind to turn his face to the wall, not worry about people. Come on, right? Ah, oh. that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Did you not understand? Moses couldn't cross over because of people made him frustrated. He missed out on the promises because of the people. Yeah, that's right. Hezekiah said, I can't be frustrated of what I'm going through. I'll turn my face to the wall. But after the fact, God made me on the brick house. Here comes the enemy. We're bringing the value to our property because of the insecurities. Uh -huh. Oh, God. <laughs> Because of the insecurity. Because we want to be accepted, have validation. Show you how big our house is. Show you what all our marvelous things. Show you how anointed we are. Show how gracious we can take the microphone and exegete the text. And not living one single word. Of what God is releasing, or you say you're releasing out of your mouth. Let's go on. I told you, I just got 45 minutes. I just got 45 minutes. Uh, I want to read 
read that whole thing and show you what happened to Hezekiah. The sin of the gold, the spices, he showed all of this to the enemy. He showed all of this. The silver, the gold, the spices, the fine olive oil, everything found among his treasures. There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked, What did those men say and where did they come from? I'm giving you a letter from Babylon. You know that we are not on good terms. Come on now. We get a lot of tea. Why am I going to bring you in my house? Uh huh. And show you all my I stuff. Right. Yeah. For you to go to report it back and say this is what he had. That's why it's so imperative. Lord, forgive me. Yeah. I didn't understand. A lot of people said you have to disagree people, disconnect from people, especially people who didn't mean to be good. Uh -huh. I've learned that hatred can become witchcraft. Wow. Wow. Jealousy can become witchcraft. Uh -huh. Because you see me doing well after you left my life. You see me still thriving, still meeting the mark, still aiming to meet God. You hate me so much. Your jealousy is so much that you wish and hope that I fail. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's why it's so imperative for us to disconnect from old time. Yes. Let me go back. Let me go back. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah. Where did what, what did those men say? Where did they come from? From a distant land. Hezekiah replied, they came from Babylon. Hezekiah said they came from a distant land. <laughs> they gave him a letter saying where they were coming from. <laughs> That's something about leaders, though. When you get caught in a lie, you don't own up to your own lie. Yeah. Uh, Let's move on. I'm, that's a that's little extra yeah. stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to make sure I get through this lesson. Uh, uh, then, uh, uh, let us see. They, from a distant land, Hezekiah replied, they came from Babylon. The prophet asked, what did they say in your palace? What did they see in your palace? Uh -huh. They saw everything in my palace. Hezekiah said, there is nothing among my children that I did not show them. Wow. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the law. Listen, the time will surely come when everything in your palace and all that you uh, uh, predecessors have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the law. And some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood, who will be born to you will be taken away and they will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon because of your insecurity you brought devouring to your kingdom to your brick house so now they told everything away because you want to show them everything you make sure you put, you, you put your TV, small TV, box outside <laughs> in the trash can. <laughs> in the front of the house. <laughs> I see that box in front of that house. So I know that TV. There wasn't nothing else in it. Yep. <laughs> I know you ain't just put anything in there. Uh -uh. <laughs> 
Because you want everybody to see that you got your 50. Right. Yeah, I, I see it. Yeah, I see it. What time you leave home? Folks so crazy nowadays, they don't care if you're home now. Up. Yeah, you take it. You take it to the car. Okay, let's go back. Uh, let's go back to Nehemiah. Says uh, Nehemiah eight and four. Ezra, the teacher of the law, stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion. First time a platform was built for somebody. Y'all just didn't catch that one, did y'all? After he built the wall, got the people together, everybody returned. He brings them together. Ezra begins to read from the book of law. Sure that everybody's attention was on him. Right, right. A platform right, right, right. was built for him. Yeah. Now listen to this. Let me read it on. I have to hurry up. Platform was built for the occasion. Beside him on his right stood, forgive me if I mess up these names, Matidaha, Shema, Anai, Uriah, Helakai, and Manasseh. And on his left were Piedai, Michelle, Mekhi, Hashem, Hashbidinai, Zachariah, and Mishlem. I know I missed up on that. Azariah opened the book. All the people could see him because he was standing above them all. As he opened it, the people all stood up, reversing the word. Azariah praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen. 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 Then they bowed down woo, and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. In order for us to maintain our brick house, we have to place him back in the house. Preach the message a while back. When are you going to give God his church back? Because we want to show people who we are, we've taken God out of our service. We want to see, show people our gifting. When are you ever going to get to a place to let God just have his way? Yes. I think I went through a whole month. Whole month in church. We prayed and I said, Lord God, have your way. I want you back in the church. The man of God blew up the platform. He read from the book. He didn't give his own opinion. Listen, people of God. He read from the book. Some of opened the book, they stood up and worshiped him. Why do we have to sing the, your favorite song and why do we have to give your favorite scripture before you respond? All the man of God did it, he just opened the book. And it stood. He gave praise unto God. And they said, Amen. After he gave praise unto God, they, they immediately, without anybody have to tell them to bow down and worship. Because I'm in this place right now that I really don't deserve it. Who called? I really don't deserve this brick house. Who called? But simply because God is so good, I should automatically worship Him. Oh, God. Says, they bowed down, 
worship the Lord. And faces remained to the ground. Move over to verse 9. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra, Ezra the priest and teacher of the law, the Levites were instructing the people, said to them all, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. Why do you think they were mourning or if they were possibly getting to that point? Why do you think they were in that place of mourning? You just moved in. Just got your house. Everything is good. But, but why are they moving? Why are they weeping? That's something. We're in a place God has brought us from right along the way. We find ourselves mourning and weeping. Instead of celebrating and praising. Right, right. We've already been ushered into the kingdom. We already know our rights. But the man of God says, don't weep no more. Why? Why do we find ourselves in that place? We already are in the kingdom. The reason why they were at the point of weeping and mourning because of conviction. Come on now. Yeah. We were never supposed to be removed from this place. But we, ah, yeah. we did it to ourselves. We devalued our own property. Yeah. Our house was foreclosed on because of something that we did. Oh. Don't weep or mourn. Forget about all of that. For all the people had been weeping and listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy the choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who, were, who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Levites calling all the people saying, be still, for this day is holy. Do not grieve. Uh, let's see. I want to get to the point. I'll tell you. So, it begins to read the book of the law. I think it's in the King James Version. That's why I don't see it. It begins to read from the book of the law. But what happens is, other priests, other servants went around in the crowd as they worshiped, as he read. They began to give understanding of what he was reading. Even the ones who did not fully understand as far as the language was concerned, he had to make sure that somebody that was in the crowd to give you translation on what he was reading. We, as leaders, leaders, all of us, leaders, have a responsibility to be able to relate what the man of God, the women of God, is reading from the book. To give somebody understanding of what the man of God is reading, teaching. So all of us can be on one accord. Right. Mm -hmm. To ensure that if I at the place, if I'm at the place, I know what to do, how to make sure I don't lose my house. Uh -huh. We have so many selfish people in the body of Christ. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, granted, we don't suppose to just hold your hand. But our job is to lead you there for you to understand the path to walk on. Now, you have your own self-will to decide which path you want to walk on. 
but I have the responsibility to lead you on the right path. Right, right, right. Right, right. He says he made sure that he had everybody in their own language get a full understanding to make sure that we don't lose our break out. Anybody closed on the house before? Yes. When you go in the lawyer's office, they give you a book. They give you a book of documents to sign. A lot of people are just so happy and celebrating. Don't read nothing. You sign. You sign and you saying that they say, you're saying that your, 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 your mortgage, your mortgage is gonna go up every year. Yeah, you, you sign it to make sure that you, yeah, you make sure that you 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 have escrow. You make sure you have enough money in your escrow. If you don't have enough enough money in your escrow, we're gonna raise your payment. That's what you're signing. We just don't move in the brick house. You have to know everything that concerns to make sure you stay in that brick house. Hallelujah. Let me move on. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yes, I'm doing good. Okay, let's go to Zechariah. Zechariah 2. Hurry, hurry. Everybody's there? Yes, sir. Now look at this. Then I looked up, and there before was a man with a measuring line in his hand. I asked, two and one. I start over. Then I looked up, and there uh, before me was a man with a measuring line in, in his hand. I asked, Where are you going? He answered me to measure Jerusalem to find out how wide and how long it is. While the angel who was speaking to me was leaving, another angel came to meet him and said to him, Run, tell that young man, Jerusalem will be a city without walls because of the great number of people and animals in it. And I myself will build a wall fire around it, declares the Lord. I will be his glory with him. Now we just read Nehemiah, read what he did, but we find ourselves back in the same. Find ourselves back in the same place. No longer a city without walls. After the hard work, listen to this, people of God. After Nehemiah left from his place, seen the need of his people, got the people into a mindset to work. Got the people together and said, we need to do this. We still found ourselves doing it all over again. Why is it that people do that? I, 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 I wanted to ask the smartest minds. In my answer, if you got an answer for me. <laughs> why, why do we do opposite of the right thing. <laughs> you know, you know that you feel some type of way when you get in trouble. Right, right, right. That's what, that's, that, I'll be especially with, with Tyson. Sitting there, you know I'm going to say something to you and you do it anyway. Why is it that we do that? Anybody? Anybody? The nature. 
survived that, that, that mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. after doing it, you didn't, nothing happened, you didn't say mm -hmm. it. just felt a certain way, yeah, but you survived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Say it in the you know, you survived. You survived it. There's no repercussion. It seems like it's not going to be any repercussion. Oh, we found ourselves back in the same spot. Now here comes Zachariah the prophet. Has the vision of a young man who had the right, who had the right motive at the right motives, says, let's hear, let's measure, let's do this all over again. God said to himself, no, we're not going through that. Anymore. This next place in our life, God is going to have to do it. was always, uh, I have a uh, uh, cousin who's a pastor, amen, and he's very, uh, I say, studious, he likes strategy, strategies, and, you know, it, it, don't get me wrong, all of that is good, all of that is fine, because ministry, you have to look at every area of ministry, but uh, one thing that I'll would always relate to him. You can have all the strategy in the world. Right, right. You can have all the thoughts in the world. But if you don't have God right. in the midst of that, right, right. all of it is not going to stand. Right. Right. It will look good for the first season. But in the second season, you have your wear and tear. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 In your third season, you'll start seeing the pieces missing. Right. Right. If you don't have God right. as the chief cornerstone. Mm. Man of God says, the man of God says, season the vision that the young man is trying to measure the wall, try to start the process all over again. God himself says, look here, tell him don't measure. This time, I'll be the fence. I'll be the wall. My wall won't be bricks, no wood, but my wall will be fire. God, I thank you. Then he says in verse 6, Come, come, flee from the land of the north, declares the Lord. For I have scattered you to the four winds of heaven, declares the Lord. I have scattered you. Come, Zion, escape. You who live in daughter Babylon. For this is what the Lord Almighty says. After the glorious one has sent me against the nations that have plundered you, but whoever touches you, touches you, touches the apple of his eye. I will surely raise my hand against them so that their slaves will, pump, will plunder them. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty had sent me. Shout and be glad, daughter Zion, for I am coming and I will live among you, declares the Lord. Many nations will be joined with the Lord in that day and will become my people. I will live among you and you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. The Lord will inherit Judah as his portion in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. But still before the Lord all mankind because he has roused himself with his holy blood. We are now going to get to a point, we have to get to a point, that we can't do this on our own. In order for these, for people to be gathered together in unity, we've messed up so much. 
we messed up so much. We've messed up so much. Now, things are so messed up, we don't know how to put it back together. Right, right, right. right. And don't want to put it back together. We need to be coming together, fellowshipping together, working together. We are still fighting against one another. I have never seen so many spiritual bullies. Never seen so many spiritual bullies in the body of Christ. Because I don't look like you or look the part, don't mean that I don't have God's anointing. But because you shut up. There's so many spiritual bullies in the body of Christ. Why? 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 Why you can't help me? If you feel that I'm not meeting the part, I at the place that you want me to be in. Uh -huh. Instead of talking about me to somebody else. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Apostle. People don't help what people can't help what they can't fix. So all these claps that we got in here, mm. all these little emotion and emojis that's popping up over the atmosphere, that's why I'm sitting back here. Mm. People can't help what they can't fix. Mm. If you right. can't fix it, mm -hmm. it goes back to the bully that you're talking about. People bully what they can't fix. Mm. Or what they don't have strategy to fix. Mm. Mm -hmm. So what they do is I bully you to get me so everybody can see your malfunction, right. but don't nobody see my malfunction. Right. Because a bully is really coward. Yeah. Yeah. They're really scared. Yeah. So when you find people, as you were saying, or just a minute ago, why can't you help me? I can't help if I'm the bully because remember, I'm scared. Yeah. I got a malfunction in me. I got an issue in me. That if I try to help you, you going to identify, oh, this Negro yeah. can't really do yeah. what they're supposed to be doing. Right. And the ability to lead is a malfunction. So we can't never help. We can't help uh, or fix what we're afraid of. Right. If, 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 for instance, if you're broken and somebody else, if somebody's broken, you messed up on your marriage mm -hmm. and got over it. Don't nobody really know about it. Right. Uh -huh. Now your marriage is messed up and I'm trying to fix it. Uh -huh. But how can I fix it if I never fixed at home? Right. 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 So what most time what we do is bully the people that got the issues. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Downplay them, downgrade them, mm -hmm. mess them up. Oh, yeah. wow. Come on, to keep all your eyes off yeah. of my malfunction. Yeah. But if I could fix the problem, because I fixed it at home, Mm -hmm. Automatically, you would embrace me without me right. coming to approach That's you. Right. That's right. Why? It's because you saw my mess up. Yeah. I was honest about it. Right. And then yeah. after I was honest about it, I turned around and asked for forgiveness. Yeah. Right? Instance, in California, we had a situation. I let something in. And I messed up the church. <clears throat> See, you don't find too many people say, I mess with the that's church because there's a few true. people in here to think that they got right. to get a party mess with the church too, but won't say that. Right. Messed up the church and I stood up before the church and I said, I'm sorry. Right. Where do we go from here? Yes, you did. And everybody say forward. Because when you can stand up and admit where you are, yes, the problem, right. or what you have allowed, and then you ask for forgiveness, then what happens is, then those that you have offended can easily forgive. Right. Yes. right. Listen, many people, many people, I look at uh, adopted children or foster parent children. I don't care how good that parent is to that child, you know, the, the foster parent. That child still want to know. Yeah. Who their parent is. Yeah. Where is my identity? Right. And when they go and approach they false, they, they, they biological parent, mm -hmm. they forgive. Yeah. yeah. They forgive. Yeah. They hurt, but they forgive. All of that bitterness that's inside of them, the hatred from coming up, you know what they do? They forget it. And most times what they do is abandon. They now become an abandonment, abander, because they abandon the one that loved them, right? Protect them, right. cover them. Mm -hmm. 
right. and it's still another form of bullying, right. whether we like believe that or not. Right. So, Bishop, we can't help what we can't fix right. until the church realizes that. That's why the scripture said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know, but who are you? Because right. this situation I got right now, I'm going to need more than a you. Right. I'm going to need a God inside of you right. Right. to be able to help me. That's why the scripture, the scripture says, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but who are you? In other words, I don't see God in you. Mm -hmm. And if I don't see God in you, I don't see the power to deliver right. in you. The power to rescue in you. So that's why the questions come. So go back to your, your, your statement. I mean, your comment, you're saying uh, about, about the bullet tactics and why can't you help me? Bishop, some people can't help us. It's because they don't have the, the, the ability to. They don't have the ability to because some of them are the reason. If I damage you, it is, it, it's hurt to help on both ends. If you damage me, I'm going go with that story right there. You damage a lot of issues, and I'm so I'm so honest with it. A lot of issues that I have with my family is because they damaged me. Yeah. And you can tell me you're sorry, but when I see you doing it to somebody else, yeah. then yeah. you're really not sorry. Yeah. You sorry you got caught. Right. Yeah. So you're really not sorry. So then guess what? Then I have to take away my ability to accept your apology. Yeah. Because if you was really sorry, you wouldn't do it to somebody else. Yeah, right. And let me see yeah, it. Right. Come on. Yeah. Because being a repeat offender does not say that you are apologetic. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You just want somebody to sympathize with the ability that you are an offender. Right. Right. And God is, God is trying to pull us out of being apologetic offenders. I said something last night. I said something last night that, that was baffling uh, to some people, and I got a few inboxes. I said, I live not to embarrass God, mm -hmm. but I live to glorify yes. God. Yes. Some of us live to embarrass each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you're greater than me. You're a better singer than or what look at Apollo. All the people that go to Apollo can't sing. Right. God knows they can't sing. But they don't never worry about what people, the booing. You yes. know what they're doing? They worry about that one person that, that told them, baby, you can do it. Right. And make yourself look like a fool. <laughs> Come on. I look like a fool believing because somebody believed in me. That's right. and, and, and Bishop, a lot of times people will not be able to help us. In 30 years walking in this walk, I've asked it to many people. That's why I love Apostle James Spence. Out of everybody, I say to people, I've always wanted somebody I can look to in ministry. Because mm -hmm. everybody in ministry died on me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or got sick. And I had to take care of them so it was that I could look up to them, they had to look up to me. Right. Yeah. But God built it that way. Because yeah. some things, and you know why sometimes people can't help us? It's because God's doing, he's the greatest architect. Yes, yes, yes. Right. He's the greatest architect and and, and I'm telling you, he will build you in a way that he said, no, I don't want nobody getting this glory out of y'all. Yes. So he'll be, he become the great architect and he'll allow you to go through a trial and error. Yeah. And then when you get too big and your foundation is bigger, yes. stronger, and I don't care what storm in life come your way. Mm -hmm. Come on, the, the, you know, we got some, we got some wolves out there. Go huff and puff, oh, you know yeah. them little pig people yeah. and stuff. They'll try to blow your house down. But see, when God build you and God stabilize you, even in your weakness, He said, "My strength is made perfect." Hallelujah! So that's why a lot of people can't help us because they'll contaminate us. It's called staph infection. It's called staph infection. Do you know some folks are sick is because some people didn't clean their hands while they were cooking the food? Some folks didn't clean their hands and went right to the bathroom and took a, a, a number two. And didn't even wash your hands. Can I say something? We don't have to need a number two because most bathrooms are more, most bathrooms is more contaminated than a dog's mouth. And I'm telling you what I know. Most bathrooms in our homes is more contaminated than the mouth of a dog that's outside living. And we sit and we flush toilets, and it teaches us when the flushes of toilets that bad feces bacteria springs up to six feet in the air and spread out six feet wide. We leave our toothbrushes on the counters. We leave our face towels, our combs. Come on. And 
and then we end up breathing. You're supposed to put the top down before you flush the toilet. Yes. But how many of us have, even me, flushed the toilet with yes. the top still up? Yep. Yes. And got bacteria growing all through the house. Our baby's going in, touching stuff. We touching stuff. Yeah. We put something, and then we put it in our beds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why they teach us to do what? To uh, wash our, our linens every week. Yeah. Everybody don't wash their linens every week. Yeah. And we got bacteria, feces. Said all that to say to, to your bishop. Self-infection. Mm -hmm. Some people can't help you because they are already sick themselves. Yeah. yeah. Yes. They're sick themselves and they just been on antibiotics and you don't know yes. it. Yes. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yes, They're on antibiotics and you don't know it. Yeah. But what if, because watch this, if you're not a specialist, uh -huh. like Sister Nisi, myself, and a few others that worked in the hospitals, you can see they can be on all the antibiotics they want. You can look at somebody and say something wrong because your breath saying something wrong. Because I know you brush your teeth. I watch you brush your teeth. Why is that odor coming up out of you? This last moment I was struggling with my summer, I kept saying, oh my God, Woo! give me a minute. I was smelling because I was sick on the inside. And I don't care how much I brush and gargle on the floor. When I get to talking, it will, I said, all right, somebody give me a minute. Give me.